Hi, I'm Julie Safarin, and today I'll be talking to you about the pharmacogenomics of glubenclamide and the gene G6PD. Glubenclamide or gliburide is an oral anti-diabetic drug that is used for the treatment of non-insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. Its chemical structure is shown here on the right, and it belongs to a class of drugs called sulfonylureas. It stimulates pancreatic beta cells to secrete insulin in order to decrease blood glucose levels, and it may cause hypoglycemia and weight gain. Glubenclamide first acts by binding to the sulfonylurea receptor 1, or SIR1, on the surface of pancreatic beta cells and reduces potassium conductance to lead to a depolarization of this membrane. This depolarization stimulates calcium ion influx through the voltage-gated calcium channels and raises the intracellular concentration of calcium ions in order to induce the secretion or exocytosis of insulin. The G6PD gene is located on the long arm of the X chromosome at location Q28 and stands for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. This encodes the enzyme G6PD that is intracellular cytosolic and is expressed in all cells. The G6PD enzyme has the crucial role of catalyzing the first reaction in the pentose phosphate pathway, or the PPP pathway, in which glucose 6-phosphate is converted into the pentose sugars that are required for glycolysis and other bio synthetic reactions, and this reaction also helps to reduce NADPH. And NADPH enables cells to counterbalance oxidative stress that can be triggered by several oxidant agents. Red blood cells are the cell types in our bodies that don't have mitochondria, and so this pentose um, phosphate pathway is really crucial to them because it's their only source of NADPH. And so their defense against oxidative damage is really dependent on the enzyme G6PD. What we're trying to understand here is the possible mechanism of interaction between our glubenclamide drug and any genetic variants in G6PD that might lead to deficient G6PD enzyme. And so a person taking glubenclamide will have lower levels of glucose in their blood, and uh, in combination with the deficient G6PD enzyme, this might lead to lower conversions of glucose 6-phosphate in the PPP pathway, and lower productions of NADPH will um, eventually lead to an accumulation of organic hydroperoxides, or ROS. And this accumulation of organic hydroperoxides eventually causes red blood cell damage and hemolysis, which is the disruption um, or the destruction of these cells and will eventually cause anemia. More than 400 variations of the G6PD enzyme have been described based on their clinical manifestations and biochemical properties, and most of these variants are point mutations. And here you see a diagram showing the frequency of uh, point mutations at exon 10. And frame deletions are also associated with the most severe clinical manifestations. Here you see a world map distribution of the G6PD deficiency, which has been described as one of the most prevalent enzyme deficiencies in the world, affecting about 4.9% of the world's population. And the highest frequencies are detected in Africa, Asia, the Mediterranean region, and the Middle East. In this table, you can see the three main functional variants of G6PD that have been described in relation with our glubenclamide drug. Um, all of them have been uh, the result of mesense mutations, so an amino acid change that has led to reduced function of the G6PD enzyme. Um, two of them are of African dis uh, descent, and one of them has Mediterranean or Middle Eastern ancestry. But only for two of them have we found um, clinical associations. So one of them, uh, the first one in this table, uh, in a study in 2004 in a 58-year-old woman, and the third variant on this table in 1996 uh, was associated with acute hemolysis in a 61-year-old patient. And so the associated response after the administration of glubenclamide in both of these patients was acute hemolysis that stopped after the drug was uh, no longer given. The current Im implications of these studies um, and these adverse reactions um, was that the FDA labeled glucovents tablets that contain gliburide and metformin to warn G6PD deficient individuals against hemolytic, um, hemolytic anemia and advises using a non sulfonylurea alternative. And this red box here is the actual FDA label. The WHO also recommends testing of drugs to predict the risk for hemolysis in uh, G6PD deficient individuals, especially in areas with high prevalence of G6PD deficiency. 
Um, now, for future clinical studies, it's important to keep in mind that due to X-linked mosaicism, the diagnosis of G6PD deficiency in heterozygous females especially is very difficult, and so testing for both genotype and phenotypic enzyme function would be really an ideal method in order to draw strong associations for causative variants. And so a nice future implication of this is to find a way to do both of these in a cost-effective manner. Also, more and larger studies uh, are needed in the future since current retrospective studies are not available. Um, in order to understand the relative risk of hemolysis and G G6 PD deficient individuals that are taking globenclamide. So thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed my talk.